no, no, no. You said we had until midnight. I'm not ready to leave. Look at all this. Wait a minute. A cute outfit, a bicycle. You're not a gray hand. Oh, what a relief. I'm sorry. I just assumed because who else would be... What are you doing here? Today? You're trying to do that today? Wow, and I thought I was busy. Welcome to Tiang Valley. You should have been here a week ago when the evacuation started. Almost everyone is gone now. My son and I are still here. There's a few old people left too. You might come across them. Hopefully everyone will leave the valley tonight. We're going to live in the city, in a little apartment. Look! See how they put the dimensions on the back? I recreated our future apartment here, on the lawn. This is the space we have to work with. I'm trying to really imagine what it'll be like. We're going from a big farm to one room. And we need to be packed by tonight. I already packed for myself and my son, but my husband Yuri is a little harder to pack for because he passed away recently. And I can't bring all his things. It's not realistic. His stuff is still, it's all here. It's okay. What'd you say you wanted to see? The true state of all things? It must be in here somewhere. We can do this. Just need to decide. Yuri learned to paint from our neighbor, Matiora. He painted all three of these. This is a self-portrait he did. Kind of intense, right? He was more handsome than that. I wish he could have seen himself the way I saw him, you know? He was really lovely. Just occasional dark moods from his work. This is his portrait of me. We got into a fight over it. What's that supposed to mean? You just splatter some paint on the canvas and put my name on it? He said it was my essence. I don't know. Do you think it looks like me? He painted this for Kochi. Some kind of private joke between the two of them. I don't get it. They were both interested in the war and how it ended. I'm not. I just pray nothing like that will ever happen again. Which painting should I take with me? Yes, you're right. Himself, from his own eyes. Something I could never see without this painting. Our old cart broke. I overloaded it. So I had to use the wheels of his bicycle. Now he's so mad he won't say a word.
I've packed my essential clothes. I don't know what to do with these. This was Yuri's best suit. Maybe when Kochi grows up, it'll fit him. That's a long time away, though. My island dress. I made this for our trip to the islands, the trip we never took. It was based on a photo of a seaside azendance. The hours I spent on this. These are some of Yuri's clothes from when he was a kid. I thought Kochi could wear them, but he says they're itchy. So what's the use? But to throw them away, he was a little boy. He would put these clothes and go to school. He grew up. Oh, God, this is... I mean, this hurts a little. Okay. Yes, of course we'll bring this. I should bring anything that helps Kochi remember his dad. All right, this is going well. But I feel like I'm forgetting something. Or someone. The demon of shame and mourning. How could I have forgotten? Now, where did I put him? We need to bring the demon of shame and mourning. When someone dies and you're in mourning, you're supposed to keep the demon in sight at all times. He's supposed to remind you of your regrets. It's a religious thing. These are Yuri's books. They're pretty heavy. This is an old religious book, The Prism of Yesterday. He didn't like to talk about his faith. I haven't read it much. Maybe there's a part of him in these pages, a part I never understood that I could still glimpse. Maybe he would want me to keep this one, but I don't know. It just doesn't mean much to me. Yuri found this old tourist guide to the valley before we moved here. He was so excited. But this guide is really out of date. It's from way before the war. There's something optimistic about the colors they used. Yuri really wanted to take a trip to the archipelago together. We prepared for it a lot. Even taught ourselves a bit of the language from this book but we never made the trip. It was always going to be soon, but it never happened. Seems like the kind of thing no one does anymore. Which should I take with me? We have a special feeling for the season just before us, the one our parents grew up in. It's like it was right there, but we missed it. We know there were horrors, but somehow everyone seems innocent. I suppose I'll be leaving the other two behind. I know they're heavy, but would you want to take one with you? Maybe it can teach you something, if you can get through it. Let's see how this is going so far. We'll remember Yuri's excitement coming to the valley. Kochi will be so proud to wear this suit someday. I'll remember how Yuri saw himself. I think we're almost there. Let's just look a little more. We build our lives out of what we leave behind as much as from what we carry with us.
I went through all our old photos. Trying to see what I might be forgetting. I love that view. Have you been up there? By the entrance to the shrine? You really should go see it when it opens. It's just across the river and up the hill. The doors to the shrine open when the sun goes down. The monk is still in there. I hope he'll evacuate. That's Matiora. She lives east of here, out in the woods by the river. She said she'll evacuate, but she's still here. It makes me nervous, but I can't complain. We're still here too. I wasn't interested in having a child at first. There are just so few these days. The thing all three of us had in common, as a family, was that we were pretty silly. We used to be, when we were all together. The past is such a heavy dream, and I never remember my dreams. But when I wake up, a cloud of feelings the dream left behind. Then the day begins. I move around and that trace disappears. I wonder if our memories of the valley will drift away like that. Enough of these old photos. We still have work to do. My husband built these tools to study the valley. They were his life's work, and they took his life away, too. So what do I do with them? You can't buy tools like these. He made them. My husband didn't insult God, but maybe he stepped on his toe, and his life went out of him. There's the skin of our body that keeps us together, but there's also the skin of our minds. The skin of your mind can pop like a bubble, and everything that makes you yourself will come pouring out, and the earth will devour it eagerly, the way wind fills a vacuum. They might be incredibly valuable to a scientist on the other side of the world. I don't know. I also hate them. I get you're a curious soul, but I forbid you from using them. I don't care, but he did. He gave his life trying to understand this world. I can't keep these tools. And I can't throw them away. There's even more of them, bigger ones, out at his work shed. Okay, I'm going to turn away now. I want you to take them or throw them away. I don't want to know. All right, this is it. I killed him. The demon of shame and mourning. What was I thinking bringing it along? What an awful tradition. Kochi, do you still want to take a final tour of the valley? Let's get those wheels back where they belong. I know what I'll carry with me. It's something I couldn't leave behind if I tried. It couldn't be crushed like the demon. It's too many layers deep. I'll carry the part of me that's gone. That's missing. There's so much life left that ours grow along its edges. Something like that.
I'm glad you came to Tiang Valley today. Thank you for being there for me. I didn't realize how much I needed a stranger's ear. Now, there's no rush, but as you try to wrap your mind around this place, feel free to come ask me questions. I'll be right here until night comes. Mom wasn't there when he passed away. I was there. Dad had his eyes closed, but he was making a face like he could see something. So I asked him what he was looking at. He said he was looking at me, and I was all grown up. He saw me climbing up a hill in the sun. Then he said his memories were falling to the soil, and he had to go with them. He didn't want to go, but he had to. He squeezed my hand and it hurt, but I didn't mind. Can we wait here a while just to see if something will happen? I met a boy who lost his father just like I did. It's something I don't talk about much, but I did to him. I've been recording everything for you, but this feels private. I'm not sure if I want to share this with the future. I was about your age when I lost my dad. Growing up, everyone said I took after him. I didn't know what it meant exactly, but I felt proud. He fell while climbing a mountain. The other climbers looked for him. He really tried. A friend of his almost fell, maybe in the same spot. The search was called off, but my search kept going. I couldn't understand where he went. Every morning when I woke up, I thought he'd be back. Couldn't he come back just as easily as he disappeared? I was embarrassed to look for him, but I did. I thought about impossibly small places, like in the air of my breath, or in the silence between heartbeats. It was silly. I felt silly. At the same time I was growing up, I was changing all the time. Every night I would go to sleep and wake up a little different than the day before. And I realized my dad had gone to a place where you don't sleep and don't wake up, where you never change. They must be waiting for us there, in the place we all were before our memories began. You're still here. The tour is over. That's your prize, okay? I have to go home now. I'll see you some day later today.
I knew my brain was doing something special. I thought I'd wake up with an idea for a new shape or color. Everybody would love my new shape or color, but instead my brain gave me a dream which made people afraid, which is making you leave. The dream scared me, but also made me glad to be alive. I am happy to keep living. I don't mind. The elder said it means this season is ending soon. I want to tell you the dream now. Let's shut our eyes and lay on the roof. We are already on the roof. That's good. I'll speak the dream out loud and you imagine it. You can close your eyes now. I'll tell you when to open them. I am in the forest. The sun is bright. My stomach rumbles. I'm hungry. I look for something to eat. There are fruit trees lining the path. I look for one to pick, to eat. I climb up one of the trees and reach out to grab a shining red apple. I blink and suddenly the apple is rotten. It looks like it's full of spiders. I blink again and now the apple is just a baby apple. Not ripe or rotten. I lose my balance and fall onto the ground. The apple changes colors. Some are eaten, some disappear. I hear a voice. Someone is there with me. I try to recognize who they are, but their face keeps changing. They're kind of everywhere. I tell them I'm hungry. I want what the earth is trying to give me. They say, these aren't apples. They're memories of every apple I've ever seen. There's something wrong with my eyes. And there's something wrong with the soil. They say I need to look into the sun to clear out my vision. They say we're going to look together. And that when we do, they'll melt away. They want to. Then behind them I see you watching from the shadows. You've been taking notes on everything. This makes me feel better. I turn my head and I let the light in. I lose track of everything. When I get my senses back, I find myself holding a round red fruit in my hand. I don't know what it is. But I take a bite, and it's the most delicious thing I've ever tasted. Then I woke up. You can open your eyes now. You probably have questions. It wasn't only my fault that the apples were acting funny. It seemed like the natural world, or whatever it's called. The land didn't know what time it was either. The soil had to forget a little. The face of the ghost person in the dream? They were everyone and no one. It reminded me of someone I used to look for. My birth was not easy. I was bigger than most babies. After I was born, the elder advised them not to have any more children. But years later, my parents tried. They told me I'd have a sibling. But we lost them a few weeks later. I felt like it was my fault. I should have been born last, if ever. I needed to see this missing person somewhere. So I searched faces for a face I'd never seen. I thought I had to carry them forever. But in the dream, they wanted to become part of everything. I had to let them go, which felt like a piece of me was dying. It hurts a lot, but it's a nice thing to do if 
if you can. To let part of you become part of everything. Oh, I feel a bit winded now. I feel like everything is happening the way it should. But I still wish none of it would happen at all. I wish my dream didn't mean anything. I wish we had wasted more time together. I know. Thank you for reminding me. We'll go down this roof together, and you'll keep going down and down, down into the heart of the world. Thank you for listening to my dream. Oh, that sound. The camera click. The valley used to be so full of the sounds you couldn't hear yourself think. Now to hear it again. That sweet, awful click. You came to see the work of the reclusive artist. Come here. Let me see. Bring it close. Oh, my eyes. I can only see here. Awful. Form, color, subject. Simply awful. That was me trying to play to the crowd to be charming. A crazy woman made this junk. An artist. I buried her a long time ago. I'm surrounded by it. I spent my life trying to make something beautiful and true. I failed. Can you bring me photos of my art? I'd like to see my work one more time. I want to see how I wasted my life. Come, show me. What do you think of it? Wrong. What a soulless object. Look at that face. Broken eyes. Nothing graceful about it. I should have grown ivy over them. At least the flood will take it all away. Was I never truly inspired? Did I really fail so completely? Let's see another. The color is hideous. I thought if I stood outside his door long enough in the rain, that God would let me inside. All I did was toil my fingers to pieces. I wanted to capture this valley 
in a piece of art. That's all. It's just junk. Enough about my... Let me see what else you've got in that journal. My trash all on a page together, like a real art exhibit. One day, you could add my name to it. Mitsura. They might as well know who to blame. The museum vault. Every artist dreams of their work hanging on its walls. Oh, oh my god. You'll try to go there? It's so far. It'll drain your life away trying to reach it. That is undeniably true. Your journal might end up in the vault, which means my artwork might end up there. Oh, that would redeem everything. Every wasted hour, when a dream crawls back out of your throat, it hurts. But I can do better than those little statues. I can, if you help me. This art will memorialize Cheng Valley, and we'll finish it together. Cheng Valley has many faces, many themes, characters, eras, stages of its existence. Take a look through this junk. And we'll pick one of those faces. A face to show Cheng Valley to the unborn children of the next season. You do that while I make some tea. <laughs> Not sure what to think about this. What is this? That's just trash. You want our piece to be about trash? This instrument is so beat up, but lovingly preserved. It must have played some important tunes. Oh, you've brought me Manchez's violin. He was a wonderful singer. We were so proud he came from Cheng Valley. He collected stories, games, and songs, and spread them across the world. You remind me of him. He died of a heart attack on a stage in a foreign land. It was a brief and powerful feeling to share the love of this singer with the rest of the world. Without him around, we have less in common. Even I loved him too. We all did. Do you want this to be our theme? Very good. And the tea is ready. In the past, I tried to control everything. My work was dead. This time, let's follow our intuition, gather some pieces, and see what happens. What magic might be hiding in this day, which will pass and never return?
This tea is good for the throat. It makes me want to sing. Chubale ni hu sanota. Chubale ni hu sabe. Chubale ni hu sanota. Krimo sanahi. Pleminu tu sa canora. Pleminu. That was it. That was Ching Valley. I thought we would capture Ching Valley in a piece of art, but we captured it in a moment instead. A moment can never hang on the wall of a museum, but you will still carry it with you. You? You were the co-author of this moment. I would never have found it without you. I'll rest these weary knees, these old eyes. But you're welcome to bring me images of this valley. As long as you bring them close enough for me to see, I'll tell you what I know. There's only a little bit of today left. And then, the city, the flood, the lights, the next season. Oh, you'd never believe it. That locket was a gift from Manchester. Yes, a famous singer. We were both artists. We admired each other's work. We admired each other's. The golden season wouldn't have been so golden without him. 